Good morning, folks. Black Sea Plankton Bloom. Amazing visuals courtesy of NASA's Earth Observatory. I've linked this FizzOrg article for you below because it is a diligent fact reporting of a catastrophe from a climate extremes perspective, which I share. You won't find the phrase global warming in this one. No major quaking yesterday. We don't usually expect Yemen and Algeria at the top of the quake list. 5.6 just hit Panama and isn't on the list yet. Gotta admit, the new beta is growing on me. Coming over to the U.S., been calming since the 5.7. Swarming in four-pointers now have died down to a 3.4 being the largest Cali quake of the day, and Oklahoma is rumbling a bit this morning as well. Coming to demonstrate, southern hemisphere high pressure spins counterclockwise like lows in the north. The wind direction should reveal the vortex. Western edge to crest Australia tonight, while the southern aspect headed back north has the South Island of New Zealand a bit cooler than her neighbors. Back up north, we see a large low just west of the UK. It's the primary weather cell up here, and it complements Mediterranean thunderstorms to the south. The entire East Indian subcontinent is under lightning and flood watch, joined by the remaining coastlines of the Bay of Bengal. A line of rain is heading for the Oregon coastline, but will be effective pretty much from the Yukon down to California by midweek. Still got a power low in the central states converging air masses and creating major severe alerts for those in the central states once again tonight. Locals, please check your warnings. Solar wind telemetry. You can see the yellow coming down from the 800 kilometers per second coronal hole ramp yesterday, only to ramp back up almost the entire way this morning. Yesterday we caught the southern coronal hole and today we're getting the northern one. You can see the green temperature spike back up with density as well at the end. Now folks, we have something rare happening. Usually our radiation storms take the form of proton events, but this shows electrons in droves, about 10 times the normal count or more. Interesting, these lines are usually also accompanied by blue and purple from the GOES-13, but we do believe it was broken by one of the X flares a week and a half ago because its weather cams aren't working either. As of yet, the geomagnetic situation has calmed, but we need to monitor as we are beginning to take that second wave now. Flaring is keep heading further and further down the chart. Few C flares only yesterday. Earth's primary magnetic connection to the sun is on the northwest quadrant and looking on the right reveals all individual connectivity points are indeed close by. The worry for a proton event is low with some faded sunspots. Each is large in size but the strongest magnetic umbras are as far away from each other as possible within the group. Little chance of mixing the polarities here. In fact, look how much they've faded since catching a glimpse of Earth. These guys on the limb are somewhat lackluster at the moment as well. You all remember that the planets are dancing in the sunset sky for a few more days. You now know energetic flux at planet Earth is anomalous and strong. Let's see if this can hold out until the next umbral opening sets a large, trans-equatorial coronal hole squarely in Earth's direction. So far, we have seen no foreshock precursors of another 8-pointer like we had in Russia last week, but we'll keep watch. The best eruption of the day came off the backside with Stereo A providing our vantage point here. Shots of our star to close. The filaments are awesome today. Eyes open. No fear. It's 6.40 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.